Good afternoon. This video is going to be quite a short one. It's not really big or important enough to warrant a place as a full episode in my series about improving Britain's rail network. Think of it as a sort of 4.1, a little extra. Anyway, I think it's become quite clear that Hitachi's IET classes of train, usually given the 80X designation, are not really fit for long-term service. Immediately after introduction with Great Western Railway, they ran into a few teething problems, including aircon leakages, which were rather high profile, and a few days of no operations whatsoever. Then, after less than a year carrying passengers, all the original fabric seat covers were replaced with maquette after it was found they stained far too heavily. But it was 2021 when the first real cracks started to appear. Literally. On the 8th of May, almost the entire Hitachi IET fleet was grounded as a result of the discovery of cracks just above the bogies. This was very embarrassing for Hitachi, and they quickly paid for any repairs. However, the broader picture for the IETs has only gotten worse since then. Reliability problems have persisted, notably the frequency of engine failures. But most concerning is the poor build quality. You can't escape the rattling. And the ride quality at high speeds is, um, certainly lively. Internal fittings are getting quite damaged too. The cushions have collapsed on almost all of the standard class seats, making them excruciatingly uncomfortable to sit on, as there's a firm metal bar that digs into your legs. The cushions have also collapsed in many of the first class seats. However, I actually think they're more comfortable that way. Anyway though, paint is peeling off in many cases, the carpet is horrifically stained and looks filthy, and Generally, the IETs are feeling rather worn, but the total contract came to £5.8 billion, and it's completely unrealistic to suggest a total replacement of these trains that are planned to operate for another 25 years. So, we're going to have to live with them for a good while longer, but we don't have to be consigned to the depths of self-pity. We could improve these trains, perhaps even to the point that that 27 and a half year lifespan looks like something to savour. First point of order, the interiors. Oh, and I'll mainly be focusing on the GWR ones. I know them far better than the others. Right, first off, the general ambience is too stark and clinical. The lighting needs to be warmed. Even if it does mean that LEDs won't perform quite as efficiently, it's probably worth it for the better travelling environment. Alternatively, or perhaps additionally, spotlights can be added. They just make things feel far more sophisticated. Also, the lime green strip above the windows in standard class really doesn't work. A brown or even grey one might be better. Interestingly, these suggestions actually come together to be something quite similar to the original mock-ups. It's just a shame they didn't carry this idea on. As for the seating layout, I actually think it's broadly fine, but the seats themselves really need to change. At the root of the problem is the fact that they are just inherently uncomfortable. They're of the feigns of severe design, which was primarily intended for short-distance regional trains in Europe, and are quite inadequate for the intercity operations they're forced upon in Britain. Okay, they're uncomfortable, but that's not really a reason to replace them, is it? Well, no, but they've also racked up quite a few unnecessary bills. There was, of course, the not-cheap replacement of all the original fabric with maquette, and now the collapsed seat cushions will have to go the same way too. If they have to be continually replaced, then new seats might be a better option in the long run. The ones fitted to Lumos Class 803s might be a good idea. They're considerably more comfortable, and they also help make the trains look better too. There's also the IC3000, which is a proven comfortable seat, and amazingly meets fire safety regulations. However, that might be a bit too ironic for GWR. After all, these were the seats fitted to the HSTs that the IETs just replaced. Now, whilst the seating layout is alright, the positioning of the other stuff isn't. The bike space is woeful, for example. It's ridiculous to have only two bicycle spaces on a nine-coach train, and even they are almost useless. The bikes are stored vertically, which is a pain if you have an unusually shaped one, and requires the emptying of baskets or pannier bags. Part of a coach, perhaps even as much as a quarter, should be stripped and left empty for bike space and extra luggage. It could also be used for the carriage of parcels, as I alluded to in a previous video. Now, 
as a first class, I'm going to propose something a little bit radical. I'm not saying we should 100% do this, but it is something to think about. Recently, Deutsche Bahn in Germany have introduced the Edinzug, an experimental train fitted out with many different styles of interior design to see what can best improve capacity and passenger comfort. One of the latter innovations is that of personal compartments in first class. This provides privacy, peace and space so you can work or just relax. These pods, so to speak, could be implemented on one side of the carriage and on the other, bays of four with partitions and half walls could be added, in a similar style to the ones found on the TGV Atlantique. But hold on, wouldn't this reduce capacity? Well, yes, it would, but current first-class ticket sales still remain a shadow of what they were before the pandemic. Making first-class more attractive will help to fill those seats again, which, for financial reasons, need to be filled. As for catering, I unfortunately think it would be prohibitively expensive to retrofit in a buffet and get rid of the oversized kitchens, though some form of paid but warm catering should be provided, like a bacon roll, for example. OK, the coach formation is something else that needs working on. Since their introduction, the IETs have been forced to take on roles that they weren't originally designed to do. For example, the Penzance to Cardiff stopping trains that were previously operated by the Castle Class HSTs. It has also become clear that there are far too many five coach trains and not enough nine coach ones. Far too often, trains that need to be or are even booked to be nine coaches turn up as five, leading not infrequently to severe overcrowding. Therefore, I would suggest lengthening all the five coach Class 802s, the 802 series, to nine coaches. This would allow all GWR intercity services to be nine coaches long. Potentially, some could even be lengthened to 11 coaches to deal with any future demand. The remaining five car IATs, the Class 800 0s, would be relocated to just the stopping trains. Because there's no real need for any more than one coach of first class on Cardiff to Penzance, the composite coach can be converted to standard class only, increasing capacity and reducing waste. Now this, like the pod idea, is just an idea, so feel free to tear it to pieces in the comments, but I would also suggest running the London to Worcester and Hereford services as 10 coach trains, with two five cars coupled together. These would detach at Oxford, with one set running fast to Worcester, and the other stopping at all of stations in the Cotswolds. Now, I'm not an engineer. I don't have any particular insights into how you'd improve performance or reliability. But what I do know is that inside frame bogies are not a good idea on high speed trains. Conventional bogies form a frame around the wheels, with various forms of suspension to keep the ride smooth for the passengers above. However, on some modern trains, including some coaches of the IETs, inside frames are used, which vibrate and shake the cabin much more than other designs. A good first step would be to replace these with more conventional, stockier bogies. This would increase weight and therefore track wear, but at the moment, the balance between that and not shaking your train to bits has not been struck. Panels throughout the train, particularly in the Class 802s, should probably be removed and refitted. I think there's been some relatively poor build quality coming out of the Pistoia factor in Italy. I'd also get someone far more knowledgeable than I am to inspect the engines and see if there's anything that could be done to improve reliability. Ultimately, though, that's Hitachi's job, and GWR should be more assertive with them. After all, these trains weren't cheap. So, there are a few suggestions to make the IETs more pleasant trains. But isn't it ridiculous to suggest a refurbishment so soon after entry into service? Well, maybe. But they're not exactly brand new anymore. The first trains entered service over six years ago, and an ambitious refurbishment to improve these trains will be considerably less wasteful than some other projects. For example, the Class 442s were refurbished, entered service for a few days, and then promptly scrapped. So that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time, and goodbye. Thank you for watching GW Villager. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Please also join our Discord server. A link to it will be in the description down below.